Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be solving a desic trigonometric equation, a 10K special. I would like to thank all my viewers for their unwavering support and amazing comments. We have done the fifth, the sixth, and the eighth powers before. I think today will be a good time to do the 10th power. Let's get started. We have sine x to the 10th power plus cosine x to the 10th power equals 61 over 256. And we're going to be solving for x values. So I'll start with sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And then I will raise both sides of this equation to the fifth power. When I do, I'll be getting 1. Now, if you remember from binomial theorem, a plus b to the fifth power involves the coefficients 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1 from Pascal's triangle. So let's go ahead and expand it. We have sine squared x to the fifth power is our first term, and then 5 times sine squared x to the fourth multiplied by cosine squared x, and then I have 10 sine squared x to the third multiplied by cosine squared x squared, plus I have the 10 again from symmetry. This time I have sine squared x to the second multiplied by cosine squared x to the third. Notice that 2 plus 3 is 5. It's always the case. And then we continue with fifth. Now we switch the powers. Fine. Sine squared x is going to be the first power and that'll be multiplied by cosine squared x to the fourth power and we'll end up with cosine squared x to the fifth power. Okay? And we know that this equals 1. Okay. So we're going to put the terms that with the same coefficients together. First of all, notice that this and this is going to give us what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and start with that. I have sine x to the 10th power plus cosine x to the 10th power. And then I'll be using this one and this one together. But at the same time, let's go ahead and factor out some terms. For example, in this case, I have 5 sine squared x cosine squared x as a common factor. So when I do take that out, I end up with sine squared x plus cosine squared x inside, which is kind of nice. Actually, that's not true, not sine squared x plus cosine squared x. This actually gives us sine to the eighth power from here. We get sine to the eighth, so it should be sine x to the sixth power and cosine x to the sixth power. That's what we have inside the parentheses. And then I'll be using the ones with the 10. So that's going to be 10 times. Now our common factor, because we have the fourth power and the sixth power, this time it's going to be the fourth power. 10 sine x to the fourth times cosine x to the fourth. And that's multiplied by sine squared x, because we have sine x to the sixth power and cosine x to the sixth power. So inside the parentheses, we get the sum of the squares, which is nice because this is equal to 1. So I don't have to worry about it. And as you know, this whole thing equals 1 as well. So now let's go ahead and focus on what we're looking for. We're looking for this. And I can probably find the other ones. Okay, what do I know? Uh, we Actually, we do have this expression, right? That's not what I'm looking for. So we're given this, the sum of the 10th powers. And then what I'm trying to do from here is to solve for x. So, okay. So now I can replace the sum of the 10th powers with 61 over 256. So let's go ahead and use our space efficiently. So this is the sum of 10th powers. Now, this is what I need. So I do need the sum of the six powers. So what am I going to do with that? Well, let's go ahead and do this first, and then we'll take care of this later. So I'll take sine squared x plus cosine squared x, and this time I'll cube it, because that's going to give me the sum of the six powers, obviously. But let's cube it in a, a little differently. How do you cube a plus b? This is how I usually cube it. That's very helpful. a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab multiplied by a plus b. This is kind of like a little bit of factor. So if you do that, you're going to notice that I get sine squared x to the third, right? Plus cosine squared x to the third. 
that's my a cubed plus b cubed, and then plus 3 times sine squared x, cosine squared x multiplied by a plus b, which is sine squared x plus cosine squared x, and that'll be 1, of course, so I don't need to worry about it. And as you know, since this equals 1, the cube is also going to equal 1, which means that this equals 1. Now, what am I getting from here? Let's take a look. This is the sum of the 6 powers, so I have sine x to the 6th power plus cosine x to the 6th power, and then I have this plus 3 sine squared x cosine squared x, and that is equal to 1. Now, I'm looking for sine x to the 6th plus cosine to the 6th, so let's go ahead and isolate that. And it's going to equal 1 minus 3 sine squared x cosine squared x. So that's one of the expressions that I'll be using. So I got the sum of the 6 powers, which is right here. And now I do need the product of the 4th powers. And of course, the product of the 2nd power. So this kind of shows us the product is important. Of course, if you're talking about the sum of the powers of sine and cosine, product plays an important role. But it's not equal to a constant, like the sum of the squares. But one thing we can do here is use the power of magic. No, substitution. It's kind of magical, isn't it? It's mathematical. So what we can do here is, at this point, let's go ahead and replace the product with something productive, right? Let's call that product P. Now, if I call that the sum of the six powers, becomes 1 minus 3 p squared, and the product of the fourth powers from here is going to be 10 times p to the fourth. And if you start with that, you're going to get a nice equation. Let's go ahead and put it all together and solve it, and this is going to be fun. Okay, so I'll start with the 61 over 256, which is obviously the sum of the 10th powers, right? And to that, what am I going to add? Okay, let's see. We're supposed to add to that from here. I have 5p squared, right? Multiply by something. Let's do that. 5p squared because p is the product. And then I multiply that by, by the sum of 6 powers, which was written as this. So let's go ahead and do that. It is going to be from here, 1 minus 3p squared. And that is equal to, that is equal to, actually there's another term that I have to take care of, this one. So I'm going to be adding plus 10 p to the fourth to this, plus 10 p to the fourth, and the whole thing is going to equal 1, as you know. All right? So this is how you put it all together. And of course, we're going to be able to simplify this, and don't worry, it's going to be a nice result. Okay. Now, 61 over 256, you can just go ahead and subtract from 1, but let's just leave it this way for now. Let's simplify the other terms. If you distribute, you're going to get 5p squared minus 15p to the fourth plus 10p to the fourth equals 1. Now, at this point, let's go ahead and add these up or subtract, whatever. It's going to give me minus uh, 5p to the fourth. So we get 5p squared minus 5p to the fourth. And let's go ahead and subtract this from 1. 1 minus 61 over 256 is going to equal what? 195 over 256. And this is nice because it's divisible by 5, which means I can divide both sides by 5. And this gives me p squared minus p to the fourth equals 39 over 256. And this is the critical part. Even though this looks like a quartic equation, it is actually biquadratic, or I can turn it into a quadratic equation. And let's do that. Now, how do we do it? Well, we can just go ahead and use the power of substitution again, and let's call p squared u, all right? So I can make a joke if it comes up like 2u or something like that. So this gives us u minus u squared is equal to 39 over 256. And let's put it all together. How can we do that? We can just put everything on the right-hand side. u squared minus u plus 39 over 256 is equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation, but let's get rid of the fraction. Let's multiply everything by 256, and we get our awesome quadratic. 
I say awesome because of the numbers. And of course, you're dealing with very large numbers here. You have to think about B squared minus 4AC. Obviously, 256 can be factored, so it's not going to be super bad, so on and so forth. But can I just spare you the trouble here and give you the answers? I hope you don't mind. But if you solve this quadratic equation, trust me, I verified this, you get two solutions, which is not a surprise, right? Hopefully. Well, we get u equals 3 over 16 and u equals 13 over 16. And you can quickly verify that because if you think about the product and the sum of the roots, you'll notice that the sum of the roots is 1 from Vieta's formulas and the product is 39 over 256, which can be easily seen. Okay, good. At least there's a way to verify my results. So these are the solutions, but remember, what is u, right? u is equal to p squared. Great. So let's go ahead and set it equal to p squared. So u is equal to p squared, and that is equal to 3 over 16. From here, we get two solutions for p. Let's go ahead and write each one. p is equal to square root of 3 over 4, or p is equal to negative square root of 3 over 4. Let's go ahead and do the other one. From here, we get u equals p squared. That is equal to 13 over 16. And that means p is either square root of 13 over 4 or its opposite. Okay. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, p is the product. Remember, we called p the product. So what is that product? Let's go back and find out. Well, p is sine x times cosine x. That's great. So we're going to be setting these equal to sine x times cosine x and solve each one separately. Let's go ahead and do that now. So this is equal to sine x times cosine x, and it's true for all these p's. So let's start with root 3 over 4. So p is equal to root 3 over 4. That's equal to sine x and times cosine x. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, how am I going to solve this, right? Well, I can replace cosine x with the square root of 1 minus sine squared x. I can go to square both sides. I can get into radicals. You don't need to do that. There's a really nice way of solving this equation, and that involves double angle formulas. That's why you need to know your formulas in trigonometry. If you multiply both sides by 2, you get 2 sine x cosine x equals root 3 over 2. And that gives you sine of 2x, which is great. Obviously, I'm going to be repeating this for negative root 3 over 4. So whatever I do here, you're just going to negate and it'll be the same thing. And I don't want to keep this video too long so that uh, we can kind of you know, uh, use some shortcuts here, hopefully. So this means that 2x can be written as, now think about the sine of which angle is equal to root 3 over 2. If you think about it, you'll find two solutions. One of them is going to be pi over 3, and then of course you have to add n times 2 pi, otherwise people are going to be mad at me because I'm not writing all the solutions. So don't worry, I'm going to be writing them. This gives us x equals pi over 6 plus n times pi. So this kind of gives us a bunch of solutions. And then, of course, in the second quadrant, I can just subtract this from pi, and that gives me 2 pi over 3 plus n times 2 pi. If I divide both sides by 2, that gives me, uh, I was going to say 2 pi over 6, but I can write it as pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, right? Pi over 3 is in radians, of course, needless space, right? And plus n times pi. So these are my solutions that come from root 3 over 2. Of course, uh, I can also use the negative root 3 over 2, Allow me to write those solutions real quick. So if sine 2x is equal to negative root 3 over 2, then from here we get x equals x equals 2 pi over 3 plus n times pi. I kind of took a shortcut. I hope you don't mind. Or we get x equals 5 pi over 6 plus n pi. Now, you might be asking at this point, we did a lot of squaring, you know, cubing, and so on and so forth. Actually, we didn't really do any squaring, did we? Well, what we did was uh, we raised both sides to the third power, and then we also raised to the fifth power. So we didn't really do any squaring. So our solutions should work. And think about it. Even if you get some negative values from here, when you raise them to the tenth power, everything will be taken care of, which means that all these solutions are, well, these are all the solutions, and like I said earlier, they're going to satisfy the original equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.